So if, say, this guy Graham was interested in buying property in Ecuador or some other North American, uh, like myself, what do you have to do? Give me some actionable steps, step by step. What's the process, right? No idea is probably what you're saying if you've never done it. You got to know how to find the best deal since there's no MLS. Deals and desperate sellers do exist and they are fun to uncover in, in a place like Ecuador. Um, I would suggest come to Ecuador. Come to Ecuador, give yourself a couple weeks. Not a few days, but a couple weeks if you really want to find something decent priced. You make money in Ecuador, not so much in the last eight or so years I've been following it. You don't make it so much on the market appreciation as you've seen because there hasn't been much, but you make it on the buy. Buying right and then selling at market. Travel around, find a place you want to be or you want to buy. Then you start looking for for sale signs, you know, kind of old fashioned, but it's the best way to do it. A lot of these aren't even online. And a lot of property for sale isn't even, doesn't even have for sale signs in Ecuador. So you, the best way is to walk around, talk to people, hand out your card, find buildings you like in areas you like, and then try to talk to the building administrator, for example, and ask if there's anything for sale. Or even the guards or receptionists are great sources of information. Um, guys that sell ceviche on the beach I've talked to and gotten good information from. This is also a way to, to get some scams too. So you, you got to know how to check the property out and do diligence before you buy, uh, which I'm going to tell you later in this video. You know, also searching online but in Spanish is key on local sites where locals post, um, like on olx.com.ec. That's the Ecuador version. Um, basically, you make a sales contract between the seller and the buyer, and that's kind of called, an, that turns into what's the, what is the title once it get, gets registered, and that's called locally here escrituras, right? The word comes from, you know, colonial Spain and how they used to do things. And uh, once it's registered, once the escritura or sales contract is registered in the local municipality and the property registrar, then the property is yours, you know, and that's called the registro de la propiedad, the property registrar. Uh, I would get someone to help you with all this that speaks Spanish. Uh, if you don't, uh, it's not that hard to find down here. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, I would just put a little ad on OLX that you're looking for a translator uh, before you come down. And you will be surprised how many people write you on OLX. It'll just be a windfall, just a just constant until you take it down. Um, also, putting on ad on Facebook, too. You'd be surprised just how many people will be willing, bilingual down here, unoccupied people will be willing to help you out. Uh, <clears throat> There's a second type of titling down here, mainly in rural rural areas, can't say that word, called com, uh, communal property. And they these people have derecho de posesión, literally translated right of possession by the communal. Now, where the municipalities don't reach, these little commun communes have formed to kind of protect their own land holding rights and make sure that that some outsider doesn't come and, and steal all the property out from under these all the, the local people. And technic and they have these titles that municipalities and local banks, for instance, don't recognize. So there is a little more risk when you buy with a communal deed. And the whole sales process is totally different than what I'm about to explain is the normal municipality sales process uh, here in Ecuador. When you buy communal land, all you really need to do is go to the notary, notarize the sales contract, and then go to the, the local commune and talk to the president and whoever and have them sign off on it. And you usually have to have them, usually have to pay them some money. Depends on the commune how much. Some are really expensive and greedy, and others are, are super uh, chill farmer folk who, who don't really care. So, you know, what I suggest, a lot of people suggest. If it has a communal deed, don't even touch it. And that's probably not a bad thing to keep in mind. But I am a little different. I have bought communal land before. I haven't had too many problems. You can own decades and decades without problems, communal land. And in theory, 
uh, you're not supposed to be able to turn communal land into deeded municipal land, uh, but people do, and I have myself. You need a little bit of luck and the right contacts to do so, and a little bit of time and money too. So there is a, it is a little more complicated, complex to buy communal land and a little more risky, but for the right super low price, you know, I personally would consider it, right? It, it, the price should represent the, the added risk. And, <clears throat> you know, so let's take a look here. This is the copy of, this is a copy of one of the deeds of the properties that I bought once in Ecuador. You know, you get the, the owners and the date they bought it and from who they bought it from. It's the whole kind of history of the property, recent history, and the, uh, the properties that border the property um, and the measurements of the property and get all of that and the, the owner's names. So you just kind of read it through, maybe with someone that speaks Spanish, and uh, kind of, you know, it's a nice little title of the property. So that's kind of what it looks like. So there's four steps to the normal sales process in Ecuador, uh, municipal sales process. Uh, through municipals. And the number one step is when you find something you like, due diligence. Now, how do you do diligence? Everyone just says do it, and I, I say do it in, uh, in a lot of my videos, but how do you, how would I actually do it, right? How would someone do it? You know, everyone does it a little differently, but I've bought and sold several properties in Ecuador, and uh, this is how I've learned to do it. So like everything in this video, there, I'm going to give you actionable things you can actually do. Uh, here are six steps, right, when you find something you like. A lot of people don't do all these steps. Uh, they, they probably think it's overkill, right? So, and that's fine with them, but I'm a little paranoid. I mean, how do you know? I, I had a joke once with this guy who just bought a lot on the beach in Montanita on the south coast of Ecuador, you know, and, I, and, and he didn't even speak Spanish. I said, well, how do you even know? What you just signed as supposedly the deed was not just a receipt from a Burger King or something. And he said, I don't know. I don't know. How do you even know? I asked him if the the title, the land that they sold you, uh, is actually the lot that you know it's supposed to be. How do you know that they're the the real owners, the people that actually sold you that? And they didn't just point to a vacant land and say, Hey, I'm the owner of that, I'll I'll write something up real quick in Word and, and sell that to you. We'll go to the notary and sign it. One thing a lot of gringos get wrong, a lot of us, is that you know the notary doesn't check the validity of the documents. Even though they might say they might, they don't. And a lot of lawyers who you would hire to do this due diligence, they might do one or two of these steps of these six I'm about to mention, but they don't do them all, I'll tell you that. Uh, they just want your money, pay them as much as you, much as they, they can get up front. They may or may not do a little bit of work, and then at the end, uh, they'll probably send someone to go around and register the deed, um, and then they'll charge you the big bucks uh, to do that. Number one, uh, this is big in Ecuador. How much do you trust the seller? You know, Does the guy who's selling it, does he esteem, does he provoke confidence, trust in you or not? And a lot of us... A lot of us do have that sixth sense, you know, and uh, sometimes it's wrong. So it is something to keep in mind. But, like, where do they live? Or do they invite you into their home? Do you, do you see where they live? Uh, are they locals or not? How long have they owned the property in question? Uh, a long time is good. So all of these things uh, play into account, right, when you're judging how much you can trust the seller. Right, so you kind of have to take that into account. Try to learn everything you can about the seller. Uh, try to visit their home, meet their kids, their wife. You know that's just how it works down here. Before you spend big money on a property, uh, number two step you can do is visit the property again alone. Are the and look at other things like are the boundaries of the property well defined? Is there an older looking fence that surrounds the property? Right, these are this is a good sign because there are border disputes in a place like Ecuador. Um, it's happened to me, and it can be annoying. So, especially in rural areas, and if you can try to talk to the neighbors if you see them. 
may even go and knock on their door and, and ask them questions about the seller and just try to verify that way that, oh yeah, the guy selling you is really the owner um, of said property. So, you know, this is something you can do and it doesn't take that much time. How well known are they in the community? That's another big, that's another big thing. How well known are they in the community? Right? Now, steps three, I can guarantee you a lawyer wouldn't do those first two steps for you. Uh, now, steps three and four get a little more technical, and you may need someone that can speak Spanish on your side. Um, just pay them by the hour, eight, ten bucks. Uh, that's all they'd take here in 2021 and be happy with it, uh, a translator here in, in Ecuador. Um, you can get even one with a car and then save money on that too. So, number three step would be to get the property registration number. Every property in Ecuador that's properly uh, deeded has a numero catastral, has a property registration number um, in the municipal, and that's how the property is known. So you want to get that number, right? And they're going they're probably not going to know it, but they have to look on their tax documents or on their escrituras or their deeds in order to give that number to you. And they're going to look at you probably funny if they've ever sold property before because a lot of people don't do these steps. They're not as paranoid as, as, as maybe I or you are. And, and always ask it right at the beginning, are they married? What's their marital situation? It's very important in Ecuador because uh, if they are married or are not, you know, what does it say on the deed? If it says they're married but the spouse isn't around, that's a problem. That means you, they can't sell it legally, even though maybe they want to. Both of them have to sign off on it if, it's, if in the deed it says that they're married. Um, so it's something definitely you want to ask about. If they're divorced, right, does it say that in the deed? If it says they're married, then even though he's divorced, he still needs uh, his ex to sign off, and that would be tough. That could be a deal killer right there. Um, in debts and things like that, then it gets really complicated inheritances in Ecuador. Literally, uh, even if you have a will, you know, oftentimes the property can be spliced off equally to all the uh, heirs. And they all need to sign, and there's always one that doesn't want to sign. And any in any of these type of inheritance situations or marital uh, problem, I might just run away in the other direction. Uh, number four, municipal. In the municipal, right, when you, you actually walk up to the municipal, like, and there's a property kind of section, and you just kind of ask with the translator if you need. I've done this all myself because I, I more or less speak Spanish. And, you know, there are these documents that you want to get based on the numero catastral, based on the property ID number. Um, called the Domain Register Registry History Document, or the History of Domain Document. I'm translating roughly in English. They call it Historiale Dominio, right? And this is a neat document that will literally detail all the, the sa sales and purchases of the document and, and the people who have bought and sold it going back quite a ways. Uh, so it's good to get this document and they might even ask you for it when you're registering the document after you purchase it as well. Not many people get these documents before they purchase, um, but I would just to double check that everything's in order. There's another thing you can get called a certificate of, uh, of gravamenes, which, which will show if there's any outstanding liens or loans or anything, uh, or even litigation against the property uh, in question. It's called Certificado de Gravamenes. So you can, you can also get that document. Step five is you want to go to the, the property registrar, which is a little office, usually really near the municipal, called the Registro de la Propiedad. Um, every town, every city has one. And it's kind of an extra step right at the end where you have to go and register the new deed after purchasing a property in Ecuador. And you get this Certificado de la Propiedad, uh, certifying that it's been registered correctly. And once you get that certificate, then it's properly registered in your name. So that's kind of how it works at the end of the purchase. But you can also, it not being yours, you can still go and get one on any property you wish just to verify the 
who's the owner and make sure the guy selling it to you is really the owner and just to make sure that the whole thing is properly properly registered before you buy it because you don't want any any problems with that afterwards uh, step six is an extra step that might be overkill for a lot of us but you can but I've done it you can go back to the municipal with all these documents I just mentioned and with the the property ID number and everything and then try to sit down with somebody in the property um, zoning office and ask to see a plot map and just say you know you have some doubts on this property you're looking at and you know you you want to make you want to verify that this property is the property right that the property I think I'm buying is the one I'm actually buying location wise one and two the guy selling it to me is actually the owner so and they'll they'll usually sit down with you and show you the whole area plot map okay so once due diligence is done number two would be this is kinda how it works in Ecuador as far as how I've experienced it uh, you agree on the price and then you pay on a, you pay a small deposit to kinda secure the sale uh, and as small as possible I would try like a thousand bucks or something you know what I've seen done is uh, a realtor will charge usually the deposit will end up being what they end up making on the deal they're the amount of their commission but that's another way in order for you to show that you're serious about the deal you can do is maybe do a, a promise of sale contract which you know sometimes I've done and sometimes I haven't a lot of people just go straight to the sales contract um, and that's step three is once you've once you've left the deposit uh, in order to confirm the sale which oftentimes you don't even have to do that if there's no realtor involved uh, you can just agree verbally uh, if the seller will take it that's the best way and then when they draw up the sales contract and when you show up at the notary to sign both of you uh, then payment is taken so how does the payment work usually at signing if you have a local bank account which I'll show you how to get one even as a foreigner later in this video but you know usually what Ecuadorians do they'll take a certified check to the signing that you'll both sign everything will be okay that the notary will sign off on it and then you will hand over the check to the seller right the certified check um, if and also what I've done if the money's abroad when you're selling or buying you what, what I've seen done is you literally both just sit there in the notary office and when you're both there in the notary and s but practically about to sign then uh, you call up your bank in the states or whatever and you do the wire transfer um, and when the wire goes through uh, if the guy is not that trusting then you'll wait until it actually goes through and then you'll both sign or what, what a lot of times they'll do is you'll both sign and then the, the documents will stay with the notary until the wire actually uh, goes through into the seller's account and there's not really any escrow in a place like Ecuador although there probably should be uh, and there's no real e-signing like if you've bought property recently in North America then you probably know that um, you can just e-sign you know e-docs and stuff DocuSign or whatever, but but in Ecuador that doesn't really exist yet or accept it. Step four is then you, if no one else is going to do it, has to, and it, and I've seen this happen. Um, a lawyer just bailed on this one friend of mine who bought property in Ecuador, and it fell on her to register all the documents um, in the registrar in the municipal in order to officially put put, put the property in her name huge pain in the butt and then she was missing documents and had to go back to the seller big problem so you know something to keep in mind when you're choosing people to work with you know how will this all go through sometimes it depends on the municipal how strict they are some municipals are more difficult than others but like a lot of a lot of times you'll get a notary that has a guy called a bit perito that uh, they hire to do the runaround and go register all the documents for you in the municipal and the registrar and all that and then they just come back to you a week or so later with the 
with the pack here with the sign sealed and stamped package here you go here's your title you are the official owner of this property so it's good to research a little bit how it'll work um, and if you do hire someone make sure they include that last step uh, in their service and don't pay them everything up front until they hand you that registered deed in your hand okay so, so now you've bought the property congratulations um, what are the five steps after the purchase right that you kind of need to do actionable things before you can bail on Ecuador and take off back to your home country if if that's what you want to do uh, <clears throat> you need to set up a bank account and it, as a foreigner you cannot set up a bank account in Ecuador in most of the banks especially the bigger ones but there are these cooperas which are kind of like little credit unions not really but similar type institutions and there's this one called JEP, J-E-P, where I'm where I'm a member as well. Uh, it's insured up to thirty deposits up to thirty-two thousand um, dollars by the local government here, and you can use that account to pay, click 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 all your utilities, water, electric, etc. Um, wherever you are in the world for your property here in Ecuador, you can you can then hire internet if you plan on occupying it or airbnb it or whatever step three would be you know how are you going to handle your association dues if you buy a condo or whatever if it if it's applicable um like in the building where i'm at in guayaquil i just talked to the administrator and he knows i'm good for it and so he lets me pay every six months uh the six months of the dues i pay every six months just with one wire or one transfer or whatever so get their bank account info and you can do that too from abroad as and keep up with that so you don't have to be you know sending money every month and stuff uh... you can also what i would do is before i left ecuador find someone local it could even be the translator someone that you kinda trust uh... who can help you clean and with maintenance issues if they pop up if there's a leak or something and uh... you know for for example i have someone in guayaquil that i trust that i pay fifteen bucks to to do a clean for a, the one bedroom one bath place that I have, um, she's done in about two hours and and happy with that amount of payment. At least she hasn't said anything to me. And number five is the property taxes. You'd be surprised. Most people don't pay their property taxes in Ecuador until they're about to sell the property, and you actually have to in order to sell it. And there doesn't seem to be too many ramifications uh, for that. But you, if you do want to stay up on it, you do pay the municipal once a year. It comes due in every every January or so, and you know my seventy four bucks a year, whatever. And one word on buying like a standalone house and then leaving it vacant, I don't recommend it. Um, you know, I've I've done it, and you know I did get robbed. In all honesty, they took the they they took the doorknobs out the doors the 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 piping under the sinks, like everything they could. Uh, it was bad. So I don't recommend buying a standalone house and then having it vacant for long periods of time. Uh, just my two cents on that. Uh, I'd have, I'd rent it out to Airbnbers. I would, I would have uh, someone that I trust even just house it in there uh, every so often, uh, in my opinion. If you're going to buy a vacant land, you want to make sure the boundaries are well defined as well if you plan on just letting it sit uh, for long periods of time and not doing anything with it. So anyway, that's it. Don't forget to hit the like button below if you like this. It helps the channel a lot and subscribe on the red button uh, to see more videos just like this. I'm Mr. Second Passport. Take care.